I've been working as a landscape designer for about 35 years now and uh, throughout that whole time I think my style has evolved quite a lot but with a project like this I'll normally think about the theme which in this case is productive gardens and then I'll spend often weeks just thinking about it without really doing anything or putting anything down on paper and then the idea comes quite slowly and then I tend to sit down and design the project very quickly so I'll, I'll draw it up and then I'll often make a model, a physical model and I'll think very carefully about the way that people might move through the garden and experience it uh, and to create lots of different views so that it can be photographed and filmed from all sorts of different angles. Um, but above all, uh, I think about the way that someone's going to enjoy the garden and what they're going to take away from it. Normally with any garden I design, it has very strong architectural and sculptural qualities and that's the case with this garden because I've got some very dramatic walls which run through the garden and that really is the, the anchor, the kind of skeleton and the structure of the whole garden. And then again, in, in all my projects, I will use that architecture to allow there to be huge amounts of planting. I love plants, I'm passionate about plants. And so I like to take the opportunity to use as many um, plants as I can. So although I have these big structures, the hard landscaping doesn't take up much space in the garden, in fact, it's all vertical. And so that lets me have lots of planting. Although the theme of this show is productive gardens, I wanted to remind people how important it is for man to rely on nature for food and shelter. And thinking back thousands of years when people used to forage uh, before they started to grow crops. And so this garden takes people back to that time. So a lot of the plants which I'm using here are, they have edible seeds or leaves or shoots or roots. Um, and you can use lots of, lots of things um, to feed yourself. But I've also included some references to crops. So I've got olive, olives and uh, grasses to represent wheat. But instead of laying them out like a field, I've included them in this fairly naturalistic landscape. So they just become part of the over, overall ornamental feature. But running down through the heart of the garden, it feels more like a garden. And then there's shade, there are places to sit. And then there's water that sits right in the heart because water really is the root of all life, the source of all life. And so that sits right in the middle of the garden. One of the things that strikes me most about the Mediterranean at all times of year when I, when I visit and all the countries around this region, it's about the, the colours and textures in the landscape. So it's not so much about the flowers, it's more about the leaves and the shapes and the contrast with the rocks and, and the ground and that sort of thing. And so this garden is going to have lots of different textures, lots of different greens and greys and leaf shapes. And it's really all about the way that plants are adapted to suit this hot, dry climate uh, and the way that that really comes through in the look of the plants. I've called this garden layers and the reason for that is because there are lots of stories and sub-stories going on here. But the main idea is this idea that if you were to get, for example, a, a rose flower and throw the petals on the ground and they'd scatter across the floor, these walls are almost as if that's the way it's been done, they've been scattered. But it's also like an onion bulb which is made up of all these many different layers and as the bulb starts to grow, the layers fall apart and they wither and the plants erupt out through that. And so this is a very sort of optimistic garden, you know, it's full of, of growth and excitement. And it's also been an important feature that with Mount Etna sitting up behind me, the garden appears to almost flow down the slope because the volcano here creates the very fertile soils. It's an important part of this garden that as that lava flows down the hill here and the garden flows down the hill. This is where the life is and that all the plants here are growing. Mm -hmm.